I'm about to start this Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster piece. A lot of people call it call him Frankenstein, but he's actually Dr. Frankenstein's creation. So he's Frankenstein's monster. His name isn't Frankenstein. Anyway, that's not important. Okay, there's six cups total and a little cup for white highlights at the end. Um, I I put the two blacks a little separated by themselves just so I know exactly where the gray starts. Um, you don't have to, you know, it's, it's just a habit I formed. But uh, the first cup is dimension black, the second cup is sculpting black, third cup is dark tone, fourth cup is medium tone, fifth cup is light tone, and the sixth cup is miracle water. Um, that you can get through intense. It doesn't come in my set, so you can get that separately. So the Dimension Black I use usually just for the blackest blacks in the tattoo. Um, and then the Sculpting Black, I'll start using Sculpting Black before I start with the gray tones. If it's a really black area that's going to blend into a, a gray tone, that's where I start with the sculpting black, and then from there I move into the grays. Okay, since I'm left-handed, I'm gonna start on the left side, just out of habit. I'm gonna start from the bottom, because I try to work from the bottom, wipe away from the stencil, so I don't wipe the stencil off as I'm working. If I started on top and I'm wiping, the stencil would wipe off pretty quick, and I'd be screwed. I'm gonna jump in with my dark gray tone. And, uh, of my grays, the dark gray is pretty dark. If you packed it in, it, it could almost be black. So the way I work, I do a lot more brushing than packing it in with circular motions. So um, I start right in, just kind of brushing it in. And then you can kind of ease it in and, and see how dark it's gonna look without going in too dark right off the bat. The gray tone is a really rich, dark gray, but it is really dark. So the way I put it in, it's I'm kind of finessing it in. I'm not packing it in real hard, which is really the way I do 90% of my tattoos. The only time I'm doing a circular oval hand motion is when I'm packing black. But all the gray stuff, I'm really brushing either back and forth or I'm just, uh, I call it a backstroke where I'm just kind of one stroke at a time brushing it in. You can't just dip into one cup and then go, okay, I'm going into the next value of gray, just move on to the next cup. There's those in-between values, like in between the dark and medium, I'm going to dip into both those cups at the same time if I'm easing in from a dark to a medium. That way you get a totally smooth transition. I'm using a 7 mag. I use um, a number 10 gauge, it's a bug pin type needle, so I put a 7 mag and a 5 mag tube. I do the whole, a tattoo like this, I'll do the whole thing like that. Because I can get into tight little areas with it. I'll do 98% of the tattoo with this one needle. I can get into tight areas and I can also do big areas and you know, nice smooth shading throughout. So it's a really, really versatile needle. Sometimes in, in the tattoo, I may, um, if something looks really dark, I, I may lighten up a little bit for the sake of the tattoo without changing, uh, you know, the actual photo. But sometimes you can just sort of beef up contrast and stuff in your head, um, just because it may be the lighting in the picture uh, could have been a little better or something. As my stencil starts to wipe away, um, I kind of go in there and I rough in areas um, with a light wash, lighter than it's going to be in the end usually, just to map out some of those uh, those stenciled areas before it wipes away. And then I go back into it later and work on it. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of gray lining in some of the dark areas, like the lips are real black, so I, I actually gray line the lip here. The bottom of the chin, I did a, they're gray lines, but they're, you know, like a medium wash probably because I got 
like almost black going up against that line. So that'll disappear when it's done. The goal is to not have see any lines when the tattoo is done. I also want to show you this. This is the darkest black that would smear the most. And I just want to show you that it's, it's not the ink that's wiping the stencil off. Because the ink's wiping right off. See, the ink wipe, wipes right off. There's no smearing. Mm -hmm. So that's not what's causing the stencil to come off. So I'm just packing Dimension Black in here. This is like a shadow on the dark side of his face. It's really dramatic lighting in this picture, which is awesome. I love high contrast. Now I'm blending a little Dimension Black, about half and half with my Sculpting Black. I'm kind of dipping equally in both cups because I'm blending the the Dimension Black into a uh, It's going to go from Dimension Black into Sculpting Black into the, the dark gray into the medium gray by the time I get to the other side. So it's a gradual uh, light, dark to light area of the shirt. So right now just a little bit of gray lining. Normally when I want a gray line, um, super light lines just for reference there. Um, I'll do a quick dip in my light tone and then I'll run it in my water cup. So it's almost all water, just a touch of gray to leave a little bit of a line there. Okay, I'm gonna start working on this darker side of the face. Lots of blacks in here, lots of dark grays. I'm gonna start roughing in some of my values I have in the stencil a little lighter than they're gonna be when it's finished. Um, just rough it in real quick and then uh, and start working that area. I'm going to use Sculpting Black instead of Dimension. It looks like the hair up here is a little bit darker um, than the actual shading, even on, in the dark sh shadow areas of the face. So I'm going to use Sculpting Black here and save the Dimension Black for the, the black black up in the hair. So I've now that i got this dark side, the bottom part of the face roughed in, I'm, I'm going over it with a lot of a uh, touch of Sculpting Black. Um, a lot of the dark tone and quite a bit of the medium tone and uh, getting a lot of that dark stuff shaded in. Hair in general though, it's, it's a lot of, I'm, I'm really just sculpting out chunks of hair as opposed to a, a zillion individual strands. And then uh, sometimes at the end, um, and then he has it too, like around the sides of the head, you see a couple little loose strands here and there. I'll use one needle off the corner of my mag and I'll go in and sometimes with a, a medium tone instead of a black and then just sort of cut in a couple little hairs here and there um, if I see it a little bit in the picture I'll just do a little bit of it in tattoo um, it just it gives it an overall realistic effect um, but hair I think is one of the hardest things to do for me doing a portrait now I'm going to finish up the forehead and I'll be using mostly the light tone and the light tone with water Coming off the dark side of the forehead, I'm going to be blending black into dark tone, into medium tone, into light tone, and try to get a nice smooth blend. Um, so the forehead's got a bit of forehead has a bit of all the tones in it. Doing some wrinkles in the forehead, my mag, so I gotta turn it a certain way. I can only do it from an angle like this. This is all light tone mixed with water. Doing some real light wrinkles. I want them to be real subtle when they heal, so should be going really light. We're doing this thing pretty small, so I can't I can't try to get every little wrinkle in there, so I, I really just try to get the gist of it. So when I do a portrait this size and there's a ton of detail. Um, I get to try to get some of the main stuff. And I'm trying to finish up all these little tiny wrinkles I'm doing, and then I'm uh, just trying to do some real light wash in there. So it's got to have some kind of value in there, even though it's super light. So it uh, makes it look more realistic. I kind of have to get value in the majority of the forehead, but you also want to keep that, keep it real light so you, you keep that contrast that's in the picture. So. Pretty tricky to do. 
All right, now I just got to do some background. Uh, with the background, I just want to kind of, I want to highlight like the top of the head. I want to uh, just do background that comes right up to the top of the head and that creates that top edge. As it gets darker, the, the background is going to go from probably a medium gray, you know, into the light tone and just kind of fade off and, uh, and just do a little bit over here. I might do a little bit of light wash over here just to balance it out even though I don't really need it over there. In the back I'm just going to do enough to uh, need a dark background against the ear and the bolt on this side. This side's real light so it needs a dark background. This side doesn't need any background really. But, uh, I'm going to get this background in on the back just a little bit and around the top and see how it looks from there. Okay, now I'm going to use I'm dip in the dark wash and the medium wash at the same time and start to lighten up this background as I come out farther. I'm dipping straight into the medium wash, I'm trying to get a, a gradual blend and get lighter as I fade out farther. And then just kind of, now I'm dipping into the light wash. And as I get closer, as I get closer to his jacket, I want a real light wash so it's lighter than his jacket. But around the ear and the bolt, I wanted it to be darker to make the ear and the bolt pop out. I'm kind of playing with the background uh, from dark to light. Okay, I'm gonna jump up to the top of the head here. I'm gonna come in with a medium wash. Medium wash and light wash mix. Now just straight light wash. I'm doing some real light strands of hair up in the, the highlighted area, the flat top of his head. There's a, you can see some, uh, some real light, light wisps of hair going across there. So I'm just getting a few of those in there. I'm going to do a little bit of white. This piece doesn't really call for much white, so it's just going to be in the metal in his head. And just a touch in his, one of his eye sockets. Can you stand up? Call that done. So with this piece, I started, like I always do with a portrait, from the bottom. Um, I'm left-handed, so sometimes I tend to start on the left side. It doesn't matter. Um, so I started with this coat, got that chunk of coat done, came over, did his shirt, worked underneath his chin, and then I came over and did this whole, uh, this side of his coat on the right side. So I got the whole... I framed in the whole bottom part underneath his head, you know, his shoulders and his shirt. And uh, then I started with the chin, and I kind of worked my way up. I kind of just roughed in some of the grays. The stencil was really light, so I kind of just roughed everything in, and um, you know, up to about the nose. And then I started working this whole section here, and then just kind of worked my way up. And um, you know, I was using uh, every ink that I have. You know, I started off with uh, some sculpting black in here. You know, I used like a medium tone in uh, the jacket part here. I used a little dimension black in this little black crevice here. And uh, then when I did the shirt, I pretty much used a medium black for that with uh, some sculpting black around the darker edge. Um, up in here, like darker side of the face is over here, so uh, um, under his chin it's just, it was just solid black, so I used Dimension Black in the blackest part, blended that out, and then blended Sculpting Black from there, and then I blended the Sculpting Black into a dark tone into the medium tone, and I started on this side. And then over here, I started with Dimension Black up at the top, because it's, it's as black as can be. Um, and then I faded that into a sculpting black into the dark tone and then into a medium gray, the medium tone in this area. 
there's a little sculpting black in this area and this is all medium tone and light tone um, as I got up into the face this is uh, it's got some of everything the whole tattoo has a bit of a, a bolt blacks and you know all three tones and then the light tone mixed with water to get the super soft stuff so I did a dark tone in this little dark area and then I use uh, a medium and light tone to get all these different tones in here and a mixture of dark tone, medium tone together, medium tone, light tone together, and so on. Um, completely mixing everything up. And uh, This in here, I believe I did use sculpting black, and then this eye socket here is sculpting black, not to mention blacks. So it wasn't quite as dark as the side of the head, which this is all dimension black up here. Um, and then a lot of the hair was actually dimension black, the darkest areas you see. And then the areas where it looks a little lighter, I was using like a dark tone and maybe a little bit of a medium tone also. And the very top, I just used some real light tone. Yeah, I used light tone and then water mixed with it. Um, to get a real soft wash, it's gonna that will lighten up a bit when it heals. <clears throat> uh, for the background, we, I used uh, I used a dark tone right against the ear and against this bolt here. I used dark tone, blended it out, and then I blended the medium tone into that. Um, a mixture of dark tone and medium tone together, dipping into both cups. So I went from dark tone to dark tone, medium tone, into just medium tone, into medium light tone, into light tone. So it's just all mixing. Um, and then same with the rest of the background. I, I shaded it lighter on this side because it's uh, that's the dark side of the tattoo. It didn't need really it didn't need a background at all, but this side did need a background, and I wanted to put some background on this side just to, to balance the whole tattoo out. Um, and that's pretty much it. A little bit of white. I did a little sliver of white in his lower eyelid on this side. In the picture you could actually see a couple tiny spots and I uh, thought it looked cool to get something in the eye because uh, eyes usually have white highlights but not in this one. And uh, getting that little bit of white in that lower eyelid kind of gives it that wet look. Like it's, uh, um, you know, his lower eyelid's wet from his eye. And uh, it makes the eye pop out a little bit more too. And then the bolts are metal, they have white highlights, and then this, um, this metal, uh, whatever you call it, that's like a big staple in his head that helps bring him to life with lightning, um, right? Isn't that what that is? Um, that had some white in it too, and that's the only white in the tattoo. It didn't, I usually use a little more white, but, uh, it, you know, it's got to be in the picture usually so so that's pretty much it man that's uh that's the new and improved and tens gray wash set